Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be comparing a 2022 Ford F-150 Platinum to the all-new 2022 GMC Sierra Denali. I picked up these two particular trucks because they have a pretty similar sticker price, and so, you know, they're as comparable as it gets. Before we get into the video though, I do want to mention if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, I'm going to include a link to my car buying guide in the description down below. It's on sale right now, and with that being said, let's get right into the comparison. So starting under the hood of the Ford, we have a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6 that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Power outputs are 400 horsepower and then 500 pound feet of torque. And then in terms of average fuel economy, you're going to be able to average high teens, low twenties, depending on your driving style and uh, elevation as well. Now popping over to the GMC, this one has the Duramax, but the engine that's most comparable to the Ford is actually the 6.2 liter V8. That has 420 horsepower and then 460 pound feet of torque also goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission mission and then fuel economy with that you're going to be able to average high teens uh, again depending on driving style and uh, elevation as well uh, but you know solid powertrains but completely different setups right now popping back to the ford you can see from a front end perspective with the platinum i think it's a really good looking truck so notice with the lights super bright uh, and then you've got the accent lighting around it and then notice how they do a brushed finish on the front grill and then the ford logo they keep in like bright chrome though notice there's a camera there below the ford logo itself and overall i think it looks really good from an aesthetic uh, perspective and you know before i didn't really like the contrast between bright chrome and uh you know kind of more of like a brush finish but i, I think it works on this truck tow hooks there at the bottom parking sensors fog lights you know all the normal stuff that you'd expect with an expensive luxury truck now popping back over to the denali you can see here with the design on the hood how it's kind of like flat in the center and then you know kind of wavy stuff happening on the sides I'm, most truck makers are doing that ford does that and gmc is doing that camera there below the GMC logo and then you can see the C-shaped lights and then notice the chrome accent there off to the side and again headlights super bright uh, most truck makers have been able to uh, nail it with their you know more premium headlight options and then parking sensors there at the bottom and then uh, fog lights really low down on the truck which I think is interesting tow hooks down the front end and again you know it has that luxury truck appearance from a front end perspective now popping here to the side of the Ford, uh, you guys can see the wheels are actually pretty big for a pickup truck. Uh, a lot of pickup truck brands are now offering, you know, like 20s as standard on a lot of their luxury packages and then 22s as optional or sometimes offering 22s as standards. Getting pretty, pretty crazy. But you can see the front suspension, got your platinum logo there with the chrome mirrors and then it's the door handles to match. So you've got like all that bright accenting from the wheels, the door handles and the mirrors and then a little venting piece and then the f-150 still uses leaf springs you can see the shock there in the rear as well and uh, i guess speaking of suspension because of the aluminum body construction and uh, the use of leaf springs payload capacity is super solid on the f-150 uh, but payload capacity between both of them is actually pretty similar which is uh, interesting anyways you can see here <laughs> like i said 22s you got big wheels over here on the uh, gmc uh, and that's kind of like a gmc thing they always just put on their denali's they would just put the biggest wheel and you know that's okay if it's, it's it's a street driving luxury truck and so it's going to give it the you know luxury looks that you'd be looking for but there's a quick look at the front suspension and then you guys can see here with the fender flare duramax turbo diesel badge there and then you got your Denali badge and then chrome on the mirrors and the door handles so again similar theme in terms of the accenting it's kind of like a luxury truck thing so that those points will pop out there from a side perspective uh, now this particular Denali has a longer bed just so you guys know so if you're wondering why the proportions look a little bit different compared to the F-150 again leaf springs there on the rear um, and then you guys can see the tire setup and uh, here's a key fob with the Ford. So notice we've got our remote start lock and unlock and tailgate drop down. Uh, it's nice that it has an automated tailgate. I know, right? We live in a world where you gotta have an automated tailgate to be considered luxury with a pickup truck. But notice here with the measuring chart on the back of the tailgate itself. And then you can see here with the outlet there and the bed. Uh, this particular one doesn't have a spray and bed liner, but you can get it as an option from the factory. It does have a tonneau cover though which is definitely a nice thing to do. It helps with, uh, you know, keeping stuff in the bed, right? Privacy, and then also uh, when you're on the highway, <laughs> it helps out with uh, air resistance because you don't have a little turbulence in the bed itself. And then notice the tailgate raises up, which is another cool feature with the new F-150 Platinum. And then you can see here FX4 there on the side, and then we've got the LED taillights here. 
which also look great aesthetically. And notice how that's kind of like lighter in color and how you've got the plaque on the tailgate that kind of, it's not the same color, but you know, you kind of have like bright to bright, if that makes sense. Parking sensors there on the bottom and then the exhaust tip poking out the side and uh, payload with that is gonna be like mid teens if I remember, right? Uh, they're pretty much the same from payload capacity perspective. Like I said, they're very close. And then you can see the bed area here in the Denali. This one has uh, protection already from the factory, which is great. And then notice here with the lights. And I'm not sure if they're gonna do uh, Carbon Pro for the 22s. I haven't seen anything yet where they do the composite bed. Uh, that would be interesting. And uh, so we'll, we'll see if they do that for the when I say 22s, I mean the redesigned 22 with the Denali's because they had that, like I, I had that AT4 for a week, that 22 Limited that had the Carbon Pro, but again, that was a Limited, not the new one. Anyways, you guys can see with the Trick tailgate, it's a cool thing with the GMCs. Uh, and then you can see you've got all the badges and everything. The one thing that sucks about the Trick tailgate is you don't have an auto raise function with it because it's way too heavy. It's, um, yeah, it's just way too heavy for a motor to be able to work that. I can tell you that right now. Parking sensors there. And, you know, overall, it's a it's a good looking truck from a rear end perspective. And uh, going from that back over to the Ford, you can see here with the interior, it's pretty interesting what they do with the Platinum. So you've got the leather trim, but then they do Alcantara as well. I love the brown piping and the stitching. I think that looks fantastic from an aesthetic perspective. And then the wood trim there off to the side speaker for the Bang & Olsen sound system just down below. And the sound system uh, in the truck's great uh, from you know a quality perspective. Uh, I will say um, I've tested both of them a decent amount because I had that AT4 for a week. And uh, while well, I'm showing the seat and everything, heated seats back here, vents, all that kind of stuff. But back to the sound system, I, I'd give the edge to the Bang & Olsen uh, in terms of the quality uh, with how that sounds compared to the Bose that's in the GM products. But the Bose is not a bad sound system. It's just the Bang & Olsen sounds a little bit better, just my opinion. Wood trim there at the top and the silver trim down below and then uh, that's actually hard touch which is kind of interesting down below that piece anyways i love the uh, stitching design they do with the denali's for gmc they do it in the yukons too it's kind of like that cross stitching that reminds me of like the this is gonna sound weird but like the people's mouths in the movie Coraline. if you've ever seen that movie that's what that stitching design kind of reminds me of so it's uh, it's, it's just unique um, but you can see there with the carpeted floor mats and the storage space underneath and then notice we've got the power steps that help with getting in and out. Uh, in terms of uh, legroom, the Ford, uh, it's very similar. Like they both have super spacious cabins, but notice heated seats in the rear with both of them's vents on either side, USBs. And we've got that little thing that pulls down to be the cup holder armrest set up, um, but popping back over to the F-150. You can see the door panel here on the front matches the rear. So you've got all of the leather and then the stitching and the piping and then the wood trim, memory seats, all the window controls. And then again, Bang & Olsen speaker for the sound system platinum logo and then you can see here with the seats extremely extremely comfortable i will say that's something that i really like about the ford is the seats the padding they do and the leather is just it's super comfortable to sit in it definitely gives you a luxury experience power adjustable pedals light controls mirror lights tailgate drop down you know all the usual and then you got the steering wheel adjustment as well now popping over to the denali you can see here again um, similar setup, right, with the wood trim and the silver trim. And then notice the Denali logo right there. And then you can see again that interesting stitching design. And then notice here with all of the window controls. And then you can see the mirrors. Uh, interesting how they're shaped. Speaker for the uh, Bose sound system, which I think looks pretty cool. And then you've got the front seat here with the Denali logo there. And the center portion. Then you can see all the bolstering there with the seat. And again, that stitching design that continues. Pedal layout with the GMC floor mat. And then notice here with the drive mode select, which is right next to the drive line select, which is right next to the light controls. There's a lot happening, but all you need to know is it has four wheel auto and four wheel high, which is great. And then the steering wheel adjustment is power, which is another nice thing to have. Now popping back into the Ford, you can see full digital gauge cluster here with the startup animation. Now here is the steering wheel. So you can see leather wrapped steering wheel, really nice with the appearance. 
I got the contrast stitching and then you can see the platinum logo there with the trim around it. And then you've got all your controls for the center stack, cruise control, and then turn signal, windshield wiper stock. And I like how they kind of stylize the Ford logo. Um, now, while I'm going through this uh, center gauge cluster, I do want to quickly talk about self-driving with the Ford. So Ford has a new blue cruise system uh, that you can get with their trucks. It's a really good self-driving uh, system, but that matches what you can get in the uh, GMC with the uh, Super Cruise. Um, so both of them have advanced cruise control systems that are available, not standard. Certain packages, I believe they're standard, but anyways, you can see all the different drive modes and you've got cool animations with the drive modes. Ford has definitely uh, taken the lead with this because they've got more drive modes than any other truck maker, but on top of that, they've got the best animations with the drive mode change. Anyways, auto stop start, you've got the camera button, parking assistance, and then you can see there with the hazard light stability control and then the hill descent control as well. Uh, that just uh, shows on camera. It doesn't actually show in person, which is interesting. But uh, you guys can see um, overall, you know, buttons right there. It's, it's nice there at the top the infotainment system. And then you've got the 12-inch display here, uh, which first off, got really good camera system. Uh, response time, uh, as you can see with going through the camera system, is really good. And uh, then you can also see here with all the different viewpoints there. So they've done a good job with that, that's for sure. Continuing along with the rest of the infotainment system, uh, like I said, response time's great with the screen, and you've got that split screen function, and uh, basically all you need to know on the Ford infotainment system is it's basically their latest infotainment system expanded out to have a split screen on the side so that it is bigger to compete with uh, RAM originally. <laughs> You've got the trailer backup system, trailer brake controls, and then you've got your drive line select. Uh, notice four wheel autos was four wheel high. You've got a locker there in the rear. Now I will say the Ford's uh, drive line system uh, does drive a little bit smoother than what you have with the Sierra and its sibling vehicle, the Silverado. I'm gonna quickly talk about that more at the end though. Uh, anyways, you guys can see here with all of the wood trim and then wireless phone charger. And then notice here with the trim there off to the Side definitely looks great from an aesthetic perspective. And then we have the shifter for the 10-speed automatic. Notice you can fold down the shifter and then there's a manual function there at the very bottom, which is another big plus. And then right next you got the uh, whole cup holder situation, plus and minus there on the shifter too, to manually shift the gears yourself. And then you can see here at the center console, I love how they've stylized the center console on the Platinum. I think it looks fantastic from an aesthetic perspective so ford's definitely done a good job with that and then you've got the workbench center console setup but if you get like the platinum you got to be like really careful with how you lower that down so you don't mess up the face <laughs> of it if you get what i'm saying so yeah i mean you're, you're fine if you just get like a base truck with that but it's like you get loaded up on you're like i don't want to mess up that beautiful logo anyways wood trim there on the glove box and you can see the leather on the dash definitely nice and then here's the top with the sunglass holder panoramic sunroof and power sliding window and then notice universal garage door openers and then just a darker colored headliner. Um, but tons of glare. Um, so sorry about that. But anyways, you guys can see total MSRP just over $71,000. Popping back over to the Denali. Ooh, digital gauge cluster. Here we go. This is getting exciting. So here's the steering wheel with the Denali. Um, first off, you can see you've got a nice leather trim all around and then the stitching there in the center portion. Controls for the center stack. These will these are a complete carryover from prior. Uh, and then uh, cruise control. And like I said, um, paddle shifters on the back. Uh, but like I said, you can get Super Cruise uh, with some of the Sierra models, which is like self-driving. And then you've got the windshield wiper turn signal stock. Now here's the full digital gauge cluster. Um, I think it looks really nice, just as modern as what the uh, Ford has. So I think they've done a great job with it. Uh, functionality is very similar in terms of the different bits of information you can see. Um, the one thing, as you'll see as I go through the different drive modes, is it does have a little animation there with the truck, right? So notice I go in the tall mode, it shows it towing. Um, but I don't know, I've, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm younger and play video games. I kind of like the animations that the Ford does uh, because it's like, it, it feels very video gamey, right? And so it just, I don't know, it, it clicks more to me. But uh, I'm sure that someone that is, you know, more mature than me <laughs> probably likes the GMC animation a little bit more because it's, you know, just, it's just more normal, right? It's not this crazy flipping back and forth. Anyways, here's the camera system. Uh, just as good as the Ford's. 
if not better in certain respects because you've got more camera views. So with the Ford, you can see all around the truck and then you can see the bed and the receiver hitch and all that kind of stuff. This, you can see all around the truck and you can see wheel shots as well, which me being an off-road enthusiast, I would kill for this on any vehicle. So I think that's a huge plus on the side of the GMC. And so, you know, resolution is just as good. So I, I guess I'll give the slight wind to the GMC from a camera system perspective. And uh, moving from that to the rest of the entertainment system, it's super similar to the Fords. So you've got like this part of the screen, which is like your home screen and the side screens like this, you know, little basically auxiliary tabs that you can uh, pull over and everything. So function is very similar. Heated, cooled seats in the front, dual zone climate, all that same stuff that the Platinum has. Uh, but I guess one thing we should talk about the Platinum is you can get massaging seats in the higher end Ford. So that is something that's something to consider. I, I didn't think I'd care about massaging seats, but I've had a few demo cars that have had them now. And now I'm like, man, I really want massaging seats in my car. Um, but you can see there with the shifter, right? Super easy in terms of the function on that. And then trailer brake controls right next to it, which is pretty solid placing actually. And then a couple cup holders and then center console. So uh, it doesn't seem like it's as big as the Fords, but it has a wireless phone charger in front of it. And, you know, it's, it's still practical, right? It doesn't have that flip uh, forward function, though. Dual glove box. Uh, the bottom's normal. The top is weird how it pops up, but, you know, I guess it's uh, just what they're doing. Nice wood trim and then stitching on the dash. So you can see, again, it has that luxury feel throughout the entire interior. And then notice camera mirror here at the top, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of, especially for pickup trucks. And then we've got just a regular sunroof, not a panoramic sunroof. And then power sliding window. And uh, notice all the controls for like the sunroof and all that kind of stuff. And uh, then heads up display. So that's another thing the Ford, you can't get in a Ford. So you can't get the camera mirror and you can't get a heads up display. Um, so that's another differentiating factor. Uh, now MSRP for this one's like 72,000 roughly. This is a base model Denali. It's not a Denali Ultimate. Uh, I'll compare Denali Ultimate to the Ford F-150 Limited because that's more comparable. But anyways, uh, to kind of sum things up, exterior styling, it's just gonna depend on what you like. They both have a luxury truck appearance to them. Um, I will say on the base model Denali, I think that they kind of went a little bit conservative because they saved a lot of stuff for the Denali Ultimate from an aesthetic perspective. And whereas with the Ford Platinum, they just, you know, pretty much went all out with the styling. And I think it's, I, I think that it shows, right? That Again, that's just my personal opinion. Style is subjective. From an interior perspective, they both have really nice interiors. They both have nice infotainment systems, digital uh, gauge clusters, um, but you know, there's some features that one truck has over the other, right? Ford, you can get massaging seats, panoramic sunroof, but on the, you know, Sierra, you can get a camera mirror and you can get a heads up display. And so it's just going to depend on what features you like one over the other. And then from an engine perspective, right? You can still get a 5.0 V8 in the Fords if you want a V8, but the EcoBoost is the most popular engine. So, and you know, horsepower and torque on that's just phenomenal for what it is. And then on the GMC, right, having a 6.2 liter V8, a lot of people love that engine. I do too, right? It's a great, great engine. They both still use leaf springs, so they're, they're again, they're so similar. I feel like these are the, I feel like these are super, super competitive uh, with each other because of all the similarities. Um, but the one thing that I will say that differentiates the trucks for me, being an off-road enthusiast, and I know these aren't off-road packages, but the Ford driveline system in four wheel drive is very smooth. Uh, whereas the GMC, uh, it's not like it's not smooth, but it's more of like an old school driveline system. It's not quite as sophisticated as the Fords. And so you get a little bit more chatter through the steering wheel, right? Like a four wheel drive system, you know, has done in the past. Whereas with the Ford, it's just, when you turn the steering wheel and everything, it just, it just works. Um, so that's, I guess, something to consider, right? If you're gonna be using four wheel drive all the time, if you're not, then who cares, right? And so, yeah, let me know which truck you guys would pick.